Hey guys, welcome back. I'd like to thank HelloFresh for supporting my show. Go to HelloFresh.com slash AllInsane50 and use code AllInsane50 for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh is absolutely amazing because it is full of flavor and variety and can literally fit anyone's lifestyle. Hi, I'm Sarah and I grew up with a mother who exhibited narcissistic behaviors. I guess I'll just kind of start where I started. Um, My parents met in college Mm -hmm. and my mom, I believe, had like jumped around a few different schools and then, so I don't know what what year she was, but she'd been to a few different schools and then she went to this school and met my dad and she got pregnant with me. And my dad is just like an all-around good guy. Just, he had like, I feel like he had a typical like 80s childhood. Mm -hmm. Um... And like he was in Boy Scouts and stuff. So he decided like, well, I got this girl pregnant. We have to get married. How old did you say they were? They were in college. So okay. I think either junior or senior year of college. Okay. Um, so she was like early 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, my mom got pregnant and then they decided, okay, I guess we have to get married. We have a kid. Um, so she had me and then like I was in their wedding. <laughs> uh, I was a few years old. And then they started, you know, they got a house and we were a little family. Um, And a few years later, she had my sister. And I mean, my childhood was pretty normal um, as far as I can tell. I mean, you know, when you're a kid, you just think this is my life. This must be like everybody's life. Right. Um, And, you know, they fought. But I'm like every parent, every parents fight, you know, everybody fights. Um, When they would fight, it was always about money, though. I did note that early on, like, okay, if they fight, it's about money. It was either like my mom spent more than they had or, you know, just impulsive with money. Um, I remember one time she went out and bought a minivan and I'm pretty sure she didn't tell my dad she was going to do that. It was just kind of like, hey, I bought a minivan. There's a minivan here now. Right. And, you know, we were kids. We we're like, awesome. This is cool. Um, we always got toys whenever we wanted. I mean, we were spoiled. We got whatever we wanted. Um, I remember kind of being bribed uh, with toys or gifts or whatever. Like, okay, we're going to go to the grocery store. If you guys are good, I'll get you one thing. So if you guys are good and you behave, we'll go down the toy aisle and you can pick something out. Um, And then Christmases and birthday was always big. Um, I'm actually born on Christmas. So it was like double everything, um, which was awesome. But even my sister's birthday, like, you know, we always got a lot. We we never were without anything. Um, we never, you know, we always had clothes. We always had school supplies, food, like whatever. We actually, we had too much. We had an abundance. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're a kid, you're like, this is awesome. Right. Bring it on. Um, yeah. Like, okay. Uh, so I didn't really notice that it was causing any problems or anything. I just knew, okay, whatever. I get whatever I want. And I mean, we never really even got punished. You know, Um, I mean, we were good kids. We didn't really do anything bad per se. Um, But it was just like, hey, do good in school. And that's the only rule. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was cool with that. You know, I remember I remember going to my friends' houses and their parents were very different than mine. It just seemed like, oh, like you guys have a lot of rules. You have chores. You have to do all this stuff. And my house was kind of just like more of a free for all. Like you could just do whatever you wanted. Um, My parents kind of just my dad went to work. And made the money. And when I was really young, my mom stayed home. Um, and, you know, we could just do whatever we wanted. I do remember some of my earliest memories. Like, my mom was really struggling with depression a lot. And there were times when she would go and just lay on the couch. And she would just be laying on the couch all day. Or she would say, oh, I have a migraine. And go lay in her room. And it was just me and my sister just left on our own. Um, and... I mean, you know, we were fine, like she was there, but I do remember times when I'd like ask my mom, hey, can you play Barbies with me? And she'd just say, no, like, no, mommy's busy, mommy's tired, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't really ever remember her like playing with us one-on-one, maybe when we were really, really little, but I don't, I don't remember that far back. Yeah. But I do remember times like asking her, hey, can you play Barbies with us, you know, and she'd say, no, mommy's too tired, mommy's too busy, um. So I would just play with my sister or just by myself. And, you know, as a kid, if you ask so many times and you get told the same answer every time, you just stop asking. 
So, I mean, she would play like board games with us, like me and like my whole, whole family, you know, maybe we play Monopoly or something. Um, so it's not like we were neglected, but I just do remember certain times of like, hey, I want to play with my mom and my sister. And that was never going to happen. Right. She just wasn't interested. Um, she would buy us a bunch of toys, but she wouldn't actually have like one on one time with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and I just I always felt I kind of felt alone. Yeah, I was going to say it's that's it's important because that's how you form a a bond and a connection. So it's like if that's not there, it is going to feel like you're alone and like you have a more of a distant relationship with her. Yeah, I never really felt close to her. Right. Um, And she'd said like she'd always say like, you know, as I got older, she's like, what happened to you? You were my best friend. You know, you were my little girl. And it's like, okay, well, I was four Mm -hmm. and, you know, like. I was a little baby, you know, and as I grew up, I grew more distant from you because you weren't there. Like you weren't putting in the work. Like, you know, what do you expect from me? I grew up like, sorry. Mm -hmm. And the older you get too, the more you're going to realize, like you said, if someone's not present, you're going to stop asking and you're going to respond to that. Yeah, exactly. To get even more distant. Yeah. I always felt like, like she had this image in her mind of the mom she wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Like she wanted us to be like Gilmore Girls. But you don't get to be the Gilmore Girls unless you are a parent first. Mm -hmm. Like she she wanted to be our friend and she wanted to be our peer, but she didn't want to be our parents. Right. And so growing up, it always was like my dad was like the heavy or if something bad happened, you know, it's like, oh, you failed a test. Were you close with him? Not really. Okay. Um, I mean, he was there. It's not like he left or anything. But like I said, he just went to work and Mm -hmm. then... He was at work all day, he made the money, and then he came home. Yeah. And we would do stuff with him. Like um, at one point, my mom, when she started working, she worked um, at the hospital and she worked nights. And then like on weekends, she would catch up on sleep and my dad would take us out and we would go to like museums or, you know, the park or whatever. So we would do stuff with him, but I just like emotionally, we weren't close. Yeah. So I didn't really have an emotional connection with either of my parents. Mm-hmm. Um And early on, I kind of started realizing that even if I do try and talk to my mom, it's not really safe to do that because she would use things against me. Um, Like if I would tell her like a secret or like, you know, you're a little kid and you're like, oh, I like that boy or something. I couldn't tell her that kind of stuff because she would make fun of me or use it against me or turn it into her own sort of drama Mm -hmm. or like tell like if I if I had a crush on a boy and I told her that she would probably tell that kid's mom really yeah and then be like oh let's set him up on a little date you know um like I remember I had a friend in the neighborhood who was a boy and we were just friends I was in kindergarten he lived in the neighborhood we would hang out sometimes and she would make up stuff she'd be like oh you guys both put your hand in the popcorn at the same time oh your boyfriend girlfriend you know Mm -hmm. and I'm like this is embarrassing. I'm like, we're just friends. And like, what? Like, you're just making something up. So stuff like that early on, I realized like, yeah, okay, this lady isn't safe. Mm -hmm. I can't trust her. Like you couldn't tell her things in confidence and have her just like, no, keep it to herself. No, she could not keep anything to herself because to her, any information was just for her to use to appear a certain way. Or, um, she was really big into gossip and just, any gossip so celebrity gossip she always read those magazines like star Mm -hmm. um all those all those magazines all the time like she immersed herself in celebrity gossip and drama um and now i think it was just kind of an escapism to escape her own life of like i'm gonna read about jennifer aniston and you know like all those magazines and stuff um she's always been obsessed with celebrity culture um like as far as i can remember Um, And I don't know, I mean, she always told me that, so I know her parents divorced when she was like five or so. And she said after the divorce, uh, things got tougher. She went, she, her dad raised her and her brothers. So her mom wasn't around. Um, And I do believe that her mom was an alcoholic, but she did seek treatment and got sober. Um, But I think from my mom's perspective, she always thought like, my mom doesn't care about me because mm-hmm. she's not here. Um, and she 
she would always tell us like, I grew up poor and I'm going to, you know, give my kids more than I could ever have, which she did in a certain way. Right. Um, like stuff wise, we right. had, we Materials never went without. Yeah. yeah. Like if I wanted something, I got it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she always, yeah, she always wanted to give us more than she had, which she did. But again, like I'm not emotionally connected to her yeah, at all. Yeah, she was emotionally present. Yeah. I don't, I, to this day, like I would never tell her something like that I didn't want other people to know. Like, if you tell her something, she's going to tell other people, whether it's just my dad or, um, you know, her, you know, yeah, the other or parents. Just use or, it in a way that isn't, um, like you said, like a safe way. It's, yeah, use yeah. it against you. Um, yeah, I just couldn't trust her. Um, and, like, I've, I'd always known there was something off about her, um, but I didn't have the vocabulary to pinpoint what it was Mm -hmm. I just knew like something's not right here you know um and she would have crazy mood swings and I I do think she was like actually diagnosed um like OCD and bipolar Mm -hmm. um and I can definitely see how that you know manifested itself um like bipolar more so because I would see her like in manic periods and like oh my god I just went out and bought a minivan that's what i was thinking and then the the depression of like oh i've i have a headache i'm gonna lay down and she would would just constantly that was constant in my childhood like yeah of just you know oh we're gonna go to chuck e cheese and then we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and this and this and then two days later it's uh, you know i'm tired i just want to lay down and she would just lock herself in her room and then me and my sister would just be left to our own devices so there was a lot of that a lot of highs and lows um she was constantly in therapy, um, and this was back like the early two thousands when therapy wasn't as pre- like prevalent as it is today, mm-hmm. you know. So, she, and she would explain it to us by saying, "Oh, I have to go to the talking doctor. Mommy has to go to the talking doctor." So I was constantly in waiting rooms and stuff, and being dragged along, and you know, just hours of just waiting, basically, um, for her to do therapy, and you know. I never really thought much of it because it was just always a constant. But looking back, like, yeah, she was going to therapy, but it wasn't doing anything. Yeah. Like, she wasn't actually actively doing the therapy. She would just go to say she did it, I guess. Um, so I always kind of had her number in a way of, mm-hmm. like, I see that you're not – this isn't right. Like, this isn't how a real parent should be. Um, even just contrasting her to my dad – like, my dad was more of a, like, a parent should be of, like, setting boundaries of, like, hey, you know, his big thing was always school. Like, you have to do good in school. Um, we actually had, I went to a school with a dress code for several years, and I hated it. I hated having a dress code. I hated, and it was, like, it was a dress code that was so strict. It was basically a uniform even though it wasn't a uniform, right? right? So they had all these rules. And at the beginning of the year, my dad would take us clothes shopping. And, you know, we'd have this list of rules of, you know, it has to be this, has to be this, like solid color, has to have a collar, you know, pants had to be like khaki, blue, black, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And we would go to the mall and we would pick stuff out that we liked that also technically fit into the dress code. And he, you know, would look it over and be like, yeah, Okay, if they call you to the office for that, I'll back you up. Mm-hmm. Because technically, it fits. It fits, you yeah. know. Um, so, you know, like, my dad was there for us in a lot of ways. Like, stuff like that, small stuff like that. Like, and yeah, he would take us to museums and stuff. Um, and, you know, my mom would be the one to take us, like, so we had school clothes and then we had, like, after school clothes, uh, which was so stupid. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, she would take us, you know, wherever. Um Like, I do remember, like, the first time I had to get, like, a training bra. That was so embarrassing because my mom took me and, like, just doing anything with her. It was just so embarrassing. And I felt like she was just shouting our, like, oh, this girl's getting a bra for the first time, like, to the whole store. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just don't, like, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to do this at all. Um, And, yeah, just, like, nothing was secret. Nothing was sacred with her. It was all, like, a big show. She always wanted, you know, um, she was just focused on how other people saw her and saw us. And it was, you know, it started with like phone calls. I would notice a lot. She was two different people. 
like she could be mad as hell yelling at us and the phone rings and then she's like hello and you know i would call her out on like oh fake voice oh you gotta have your fake voice when you're on the phone like why do you do that and i mean i know now that everyone kind of does that to an extent but she did it like it felt like an extreme Mm -hmm. it felt like she had fake voice and just just in general if she was out of the house she was somebody else like she was overly like bubbly and you know nice and i'm like where's this lady when we're at home yeah you know um because when we're at home, yeah, she was either just like mad or pissed off or just ignored us or just didn't care, just uninterested. Just like, okay, whatever, you know, go play, go in your room, whatever. I'm going to go over here and, you know, read Star Magazine or I'm just going to go lay down. Um, and yeah, it was just like she was two different people. Um, and I just noticed that or very early on. Um, and I, I mean, I always feel like I'm very smart and I pick up on things a lot. And I definitely picked up that she was different in some sort of way very early on. Mm-hmm. And I would like call her out on it more or less. And like I would always get told like by, you know, my sister or my friends, like, why are you being mean to your mom? And I'm like, I'm not being mean to her. I'm like, you don't understand. I'm like, I'm just pointing things out, really. I'm like, hey, I'm just calling it like I see it. You know, I'm not being mean to her. Like, you guys aren't seeing the other side of this, you know. Um, Like, my friends in school would always, if they hung out with us, be like, your mom's so fun. Your mom's so cool, you know. Which, that that was like music to her ear. She wanted to be the cool, fun mom. Right. Like, that's what she wanted. Yes. She wanted to be our equal, not the mom. And, you know okay, yeah, she took us out for ice cream and, you know, whatever. Um, But I'm like, that that doesn't make her a great mom. Like, you guys aren't here the rest of the time. Like, yeah, she's fun when you're here. And when you're here, it's great because she's putting on a show for you. Um, So when I would have friends over, it was like, oh, this is awesome. Um, But it's like once they leave, she's just back to how she was. Um, So it was just like Jekyll and Hyde almost of, her personality um and then mix that with like the bipolar and it was like there are all these different versions of her you never knew what you were going to get um so when I was at home I just tried to stay away from her really and as I got older that became more prevalent um like middle school high school Mm -hmm. um actually in high school like I think junior and senior year I I really started trying to avoid her like just any way possible um like even small stuff like we're all going somewhere okay well I'm sitting in the back of the car I'm not gonna sit next to her um do you feel like you grew like some sort of like hatred towards her as you got older I mean I don't know if I would say hatred as much as just like protection like I was trying to protect myself Mm -hmm. I was trying to just do my time (laughs) and get out of the house I was just like, okay, I can't trust this woman, but I need her. She's my mom and, you know, I'm a kid. So mm-hmm. I, I have to, you know, do my time, get to college. You just didn't have any interest to be around her. Yeah. I didn't want to be around her. I didn't want to do things with her. Because even if we would try and do things together, it just felt so fake. Mm-hmm. It was just so forced. And I'm like, right. there's nothing here. Like, like it's like she wanted this super close bond but she didn't do any of the work to to earn that yeah so you know even if we would go out and do stuff it's like okay well if my sister was there that could be okay and i just you know but if it was just solo me and my mom it was just awkward it was Mm -hmm. just weird and awkward and i never felt a connection to her and yeah i felt like i just was trying to just get through my time and i mean i had a lot of other stuff going on like so my mom never really, she never really cooked. She had a few dishes she could make, but she just wasn't really interested. Um, and we would get food out a lot, um, like too much. Uh, so when when she got pregnant with me and my sister, she gained a ton of weight. And she was like morbidly obese, like 300 pounds. And so I was hyper aware of that. And again, this was back in the early 2000s where that wasn't as common. I mean, it was, you know, it's America, so there's always going to be fat people. But 
being so young back then knowing that like I was hyper fixated on that and I would look around and I'm like no one's as big as my mom is like she's the only person that can't get through the turnstile at the amusement park um I mean specifically one time I remember we went to an amusement park and there was this ride called the wildcat and I loved cats so I was like obsessed with cats we had a dog but I always wanted a cat and I wanted to go on this ride so bad. My sister was too young and she was not interested. Um, so we were like, okay, well, you know, we'll split up and you can go on this ride. And I waited all day. Like it felt like all day in this line, right? In the hot sun and heat. We finally get to the front of the line and my mom doesn't fit. Just the simple, the lap bar's not going mm-hmm. down. And I was too little to go by myself. So just that shame of, you know, you have to get off and walk off. Like, I mean, I know that was horrible for her, but it was also horrible for me too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just hyper aware of that. So I think just all of her issues and then add on you're morbidly obese, it just made a lot of stuff harder to do. Um, and food became a drug, basically. Um, I think... I think she has an addictive personality and I think she was using food to cope with things and fill a void maybe Um, because she was big for a long time and she eventually did get gastric bypass surgery um, and you know did lose the weight and then then she became obsessed with exercise like to an unhealthy level and she was like anorexic like it was just weird it was just like just swinging of a pendulum yeah she there's no middle ground with her it was like okay you're gonna be way over here and then you're gonna be way over here um so that was always a problem um and then you know she's eating poorly and she doesn't really know how to cook and you know not that she was like extra lazy or anything but She just didn't want to put in a lot of effort in parenting, I think. I always, as the kid, I always felt like I was a burden. And then knowing that she got, had me in college, like I always felt like, okay, I wasn't just an accident, but I was a mistake. And I think I kind of internalized that of like, everybody here would be so much better off if I was never born. Like they shouldn't have had me this young. Like, you know, like this would have just been easier if, they never had me. Um, and I just kind of always had that in the back of my mind growing up. Um, so, you know, along with the food thing, I started gaining weight because I wasn't, you know, being fed a home cooked meal. There was no like nutrition. Mm -hmm. There was no like, you have to, you know, one time when I was really little, I remember being forced to drink a glass of milk But that was the only time that I was ever like, you're going to eat what's on your plate and you're going to finish it. Like that was it. That one time when they were like, all right, you got to drink this glass of milk. Um, But there was never, yeah, they never cared of like, you have to eat vegetables, you have to be healthy. Like they didn't care. So I started getting weight and then just hating myself because of that, because I was getting fat. I was like becoming the fat kid. And you know, you're a kid. You're not the one buying the food. You can't really help yourself. Like, I mean, I would, I found some old diaries and stuff and it was like, I'm going to go on a diet starting tomorrow. And this is what you were writing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. This was me as a little kid when I'm like nine years old. Um, but you can't really do that. Even if I was serious about it, like I'm the kid, Mm -hmm. I'm not buying the food. I'm not, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I just, I hated my body. I hated myself. And I look at my mom and she's huge. So I'm like, well, she's not going to help me. You know, I remember asking her, I must've been like 10 or 11. And she was like, what do you want for your birthday Christmas? And I was like, I want a liposuction. Cause I had seen that on TV and I'm like, that's what I want. And she was just like, you don't need that. You know, like what, what are you talking about? But then just, you know, never talked about it again. Um, I feel like if I had a kid and they said that to me, I would kind of do some more investigation. It's a concern. It's a huge concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just like kind of wiped off the table. Like, oh, no, you're you're crazy. You're fine. Mm -hmm. Um, Like no realization that it's a problem that a young child is looking at her body so negatively and, you know. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. And she was huge. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is impacting more than just her. Mm -hmm. Um, And... 
Yeah, that was always a big thing was like the weight. And and my sister never really gained weight the same way I did either. So I was like looking at her and I'm like, you're normal. Mm -hmm. Like, what's wrong with me? Um, But again, I couldn't talk to my mom about that. I couldn't go to her and be like, hey, like, this is going on. I'm getting bullied or, you know, like it just wasn't safe. I couldn't talk to her about it. Um, So I just went even more inward. And just more like, okay, well, I guess I'm on my own. So my whole childhood was just like growing up and just being just on my own. I just felt like this huge void of like, does everybody feel like this? Because I don't know. Yeah. Like I felt like maybe everybody feels like this or maybe I'm just weird. There's something wrong with me. Um, I had no clue that it was like because of how I'd been raised and what I was going through. I just thought there's something wrong with me. Um, And then, you know, fast forward, I'm getting older. I'm like 13, 14. And um, I start wanting to be more like alternative. Like I really loved Avril Lavigne. And I was like, I want to be Avril Lavigne, right? Mm -hmm. And my mom was not supportive. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't. Like if there was stuff I want, like if I wanted a plaid skirt, she'd get that for me. I remember she bought me like, I had this shirt with a tie and the tie said rock on it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I saw that in the limited two catalog and I was like, I want this. And then she bought it for me. But I also really wanted a pair of black combat boots. And I was like, I want black combat boots so bad. And she was like, no, she's like, you're not wearing those. Like, no, no daughter of mine's going to wear that. Um, And as I started, you know, experimenting with style and stuff, she was just more judgmental. I mean, the amount of times that, you know, I would come downstairs and she's like, that's what you're wearing. You're wearing that? Like, really? What would you say? I was just like, yeah, I am. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I built like you would up- never go change. No. Because of what she would say. No. Because I didn't care what mm-hmm. she said. Like, I have always kind of been strong. Right. And, you know, kind of just to spite her. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of times it was like, yeah, that's what I'm wearing. Because I know you hate it, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was at odds with her a lot of times, but I didn't care. And I was like, you know what? Whatever. And, you know, she would probably say like I was sassy and I talked back and, you know, like she thought I was just the worst. Like she's Sarah doesn't listen to me. And, you know, what do I ever do to deserve this? And, you know, like mm-hmm. I feel like in her mind, I was just the worst kid ever. Yeah. But I wasn't. I just didn't. I just well, I, think I you wasn't were reacting to what you had grown up with. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I wasn't going to do what she wanted me to do mm-hmm. just because she said. I'm like, no, right. that's not a good reason. Um, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm on my own pretty much in my head at least. I'm like, I'm on my own. So, yeah. I don't value your opinion. I'm not going to, you know, I don't care what you have to say. Um and yeah, I've always been very strong and independent and really just in spite of her, I think. Um, Partially in spite of her, partially because I felt like I had to be to survive. I'm like, all right, I'm on my own. I got to survive here. I got to do what I got to do. I felt really alone, but I mean, I had friends and stuff, but I felt like I never got instruction on how to relate to people. Well, I was going to say, too, you you know, even if you had friends, it would be hard to talk to them if they felt like she was the cool mom. Exactly. And you did not experience that. It's like, how do you explain that to people if she's not showing it to them? Exactly. So I can see why you would just kind of keep that yeah. bottled up. I was just like, well, I can't. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I couldn't tell that. Even if I could. I mean, eventually in high school, I, I met a girl that had like a similar mom that I did and she really understood. So that was nice yeah. to be able to be like, hey, yeah, both of our moms are like this and we can relate. Um, but that wasn't till much later. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, that was more of just, hey, we survived. Um, and uh, yeah, so as I got older, um, I just was just kind of on my own, doing my own thing. And I would just, yeah, I would just try and avoid her as much as possible. Um, When I was in high school, I think, yeah, senior year, I would come home from school, hang out with my sister, you know, we watch TV, start some homework, whatever. And then I would take a nap right as my mom and dad got home from work. And then I would wake up about when they were going to bed, just so I wouldn't have to be near them, Mm -hmm. just so I wouldn't have to deal with it. 
I was just like, I just didn't want to be there. I just wanted to just fast forward my life. So, you know, when I talk about like avoiding her, it really was like just anything I could do to just not be around this woman, you know, I would do. Um, I mean, I, I got along with my sister and I'm glad that I had her, but I also couldn't really talk to her either because if I told her something, she would tell my mom. How was her relationship with your mom? She was, she's always been more sensitive than I am and more emotional. And I think she really thought that my mom was like a real mom that she could go to. Um, I mean, I don't know to what degree they were talking about things or what my sister was and wasn't sharing with her. But I do know that, you know, way more than me, she did feel like she could go to my mom with certain things. Do you think that the relationship was different between her and your mom and you and your mom, like oh, you yeah. on your mom's end? Like, do you think she saw the relationships differently? Yeah. I think, um, I think that I was kind of the scapegoat in a mm-hmm. lot of situations. Um, me and my sister were, were similar in a lot of ways, but we're also very, very different. Yeah. Um, I'm more of like the artistic side. Um, and my sister is more like math and science based Mm -hmm. um like she was you know did really really well in school I did good I did I did well in school you know but uh she did like phenomenally like you know she was like in the top 25 you know she was we're both perfectionists in different ways but she just excelled at school she was very very book smart um and yeah I always felt that well she's my mom's favorite so which I was fine with I was like whatever I don't care I'm like, I just don't care at this point. Um, I'll just do me. I'll be fine. Um, But I always did feel that, yeah, my sister is my mom's favorite and she's, you know, number one. Um, Even simple stuff like if I was like, hey, we should get Chinese food tonight, you know, I would tell my sister, hey, ask mom if we can get Chinese because if I ask her, she'll say no. But if you ask her, she'll say yes. Mm -hmm. And like nine out of ten times, that would that would work. You know, if my sister asked for something like, yeah, we could probably do it. Probably say yes. If I asked, it was like, "Mm, I don't know. Um, So, yeah, I couldn't really I couldn't be as close with my sister as, you know, maybe like my friends and their sisters were um, because it's not that I couldn't trust my sister, but it's that I couldn't trust my mom. And I know that if I told my sister something that it eventually my mom would get it out of her. Yeah. Um, Cause my sister was always kind of a tattletale and that's just kind of her personality. But then also I know that my mom could manipulate her into getting information. Mm-hmm. So I had to keep a distance from my sister as well. So growing up, it was like we were all alone in the same house. Like, right. It was like four people, all very alone, but we're a family or, you know. Still living together. Yeah, yeah, we're all together, but we're all very separate. And now a word from our sponsor. HelloFresh brings chef-crafted seasonal recipe flavors right to your front door. All of the ingredients you need, all of the directions can be made quick, easy, fresh, right in the convenience of your own home. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit for good reason. They offer quality protein, fresh produce, and literally so much variety and flavors. I can't even explain it. Every week, they have 40 recipes to choose from so that you'll never get bored. And I am someone that gets bored so easily. Go to HelloFresh.com slash AllInsane50 and use code AllInsane50 for 50% off plus free shipping. I personally am not someone that enjoys cooking that much. I think it's stressful. I hate going to the grocery store, but I do love to entertain and I do love to impress people with my cooking skills that I don't really have. So this is why I absolutely love HelloFresh because it gives me all the skill I need without really having or needing skill. They take care of all of the meal planning and like I said, all of the ingredients you could ever need to make the most delicious meal ever for yourself or for your guests, whoever you have over the house. I am not even going to lie. I am somebody that definitely tends to order delivery here and there. 
But something that I love about HelloFresh is they offer fast and fresh recipes, which can be made in 15 minutes or less. And honestly, if you ask me, that is so fast and is pretty much half the time it would take for something to get delivered. And the best part is that it's fresh. You made it. You know the ingredients. You know that it's healthy. And what more can you ask for? I I don't know about you, but I love a good home-cooked meal. And if I made it, that's even better. When it comes to cooking my HelloFresh, I am always so confident in it. I know no matter what it is, it's going to taste good. There's been so many meals that I was kind of skeptical about. I was like, eh, I wouldn't typically order this or I wouldn't typically like it. I swear to you, I end up liking it every time. And anytime I ever cook it for anybody else that I have over, they always, always love it too. Go to HelloFresh.com slash all insane 50 and use code all insane 50 for 50 percent off plus free shipping now back to the episode so i just couldn't wait to leave i just couldn't wait to get out i ended up going to college and immediately i felt better so you were living on campus at college yes okay. yes i was living in the dorms mm-hmm. and i you know i went you know several hours away too so i was far enough away where you could get there in a day, you know, if you if you needed to, you could get there right. if it was an emergency, but it was not so close that you could just pop in. Got it. So that was important to me to be, you know, have some distance. And she didn't mind you leaving at all? No, she was fine. Um, if anything, the school I went to was kind of like a prestigious school and she was like, oh, that's right. My daughter's going here, you know. Um, and I think, you know, like she acted sad, but you know, we weren't that close. So I think she was just like, okay. Um, when my sister went to college, I think that really hit her hard. That hit her way harder than me. Um, and you know, it was like, okay, this is my last kid at home. You know, when I went to college, she still had my sister at home. So it was like, she's fine. But when my sister went to college, that was like, oh no, Mm -hmm. what's happening? My kids are growing up. This is bad. So actually, um, I think maybe that was part of why she did what she did. Um, So when my sister went to college, she went for a year. Everything was great. And um, the school that she went to, I remember when I was a kid, I remember my mom telling like one of my friend's moms or something, if my daughter got into this school, I would do anything to make sure she can go there, right? So fast forward and my sister gets into this school and she goes there for her first year. It's great. She loves it. It's her second year. They move her into the dorms. She's there for like a week and she doesn't have access to like the website to like submit your work or, you know, I guess they have like, you know, like a yeah. specific website for like homework or, you know, mm-hmm. turning in files or whatever. She doesn't have full access to that because her tuition wasn't paid in full. So she's, you know, calling my mom like, hey, you gonna pay them? Or like, what's the deal? Because I I can't, you know, do college. Um, She's like, I'm talking to my professors and they can't do anything. There's nothing they can do to help me. Like the tuition needs to be paid for me to have access to everything that I need to be able to do my work. Um, So she's there for like a couple weeks and then it comes out that my mom spent all the money and her tuition was gone. So she knowingly moved her into the dorm, knowing that she, they didn't have the money to pay for it, mm-hmm. made her go to college for like a couple weeks only to have to be moved back out a few weeks later. And her college was also a few hours away. So it wasn't convenient, yeah. you know, um, And I was furious about that. I'm like, how could you do that to her? So why do you think that she did that? I think she did that because I think she was trying to sabotage her. I think she didn't want her to be away. I think in some ways she wanted my sister at home. Mm -hmm. So she sabotaged her. Um, And my mom's always been very selfish. And I don't know... I don't know if she's aware of that or if it's just subconscious. I don't really right. know why she does the things that she does. Um, because, you know, that's not the first time she financially ruined 
you know, our family Mm -hmm. or spent money. Um, Oh, actually, the first, um, I see this should go before. (laughs) Um, It's okay. uh, My first memory of like financial trauma or shock was when a man came to our house to take away the minivan because she hadn't paid. She hadn't been paying. They were going to repossess the van. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mom crying on the kitchen floor. And I was really young. And I remember, it's like one of my earliest memories, going over to her and hugging her and being, Mommy, don't be sad. Like, you know, she's scaring me. And then I start crying because this guy's here to take away the van. And I'm like, you know, when you're a kid, your car is like part of the family, you know. And I'm like, no, don't take away the van. Like, stop crying. Like, you know, freaking out. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I I guess my dad just paid it. My dad took care of it. He cleaned up the mess like he always would. So that was like the first big, you know, financial like, oh, my mom really messed up here. Um, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know the details. I don't know if she spent money on something else or if she was just ignoring the bills. I don't know. Um, But yeah, hiding, hiding bills, hiding the mail, that was always common growing up. Um, like if we got home from school before my parents got home, she would tell us like, Hey, get, check the mail, check the mail and then put it here, put it in this location. So your dad doesn't see it. Um, you know, final notice, bill due, just anything. She was like, get the mail quick. She was constantly hiding mail, Yeah, hiding mail, you know, hiding stuff. Um, like just, just financial abuse, just the whole way. Um, like, I, I believe that she actually had to declare bankruptcy at one point. And then I learned later that my dad also had to declare bankruptcy from her actions. Right. Um, and then later, when I was in high school, I started getting stuff in the mail that said I owed a bunch of money to, like, a credit card company. I don't have a credit card. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember my mom had said, she had showed me this credit card and it had a cat on it. And she's like, look, Sarah, I got you a credit card. It's got a cat on it. And I'm like, okay, I didn't ask for that. I don't need a credit card. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. 16. Like, what? I don't, you know what I mean? Um, I was like, I don't need a credit card. Like, Were you using it? No. I used it like once. And then but she, she gave it. you a card. Okay. She well, she it. gave it to me. Either she had two cards and she gave me. I don't really remember. But okay. like I, ha- I had seen the physical card and I used it like maybe once. Mm-hmm. But I didn't even know how a credit card works. Right. She never explained that to me. She never explained anything about money. But mm-hmm. was just like, look, I got you this credit card. Look, it's got a cat on it. How exciting. And then she proceeded to rack up a bunch of debt on that card in my name. And then later... I, you know, we were getting all these bills and I'm like, why does it say I owe, you know, thousands of dollars? I'm like, stop using my name. And so this was when like, I really called her out. I'm like, lady, I'm like, stop using my name for stuff. Like, yeah, what are you doing? Like, you can't do this to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even report it as like fraud because all my information was correct because she had all my information. We lived in the same address. Like, it wasn't Mm -hmm. like some random guy in Iowa tried to steal my identity. It was my mom, you know? Um, So I'm like, stop doing that. Like, stop doing this. So I think at that point, she moved on to my sister. Because years later, my sister got all these bills of you owe a bunch of money. And when we were looking at, you know, the company that it says, she's like looking around. She's like, yeah, I I think I bought this couch in the living room. Like, the couch was bought under my name with a card Mm -hmm. that I didn't even know about. So she's financially abused all of us. Um, And she's always had a shopping addiction. And, you know, people ask me, like, where, like, what did she buy? And honestly, I can't even tell you. Right. I don't even know. Like, just a bunch of little stuff that added up. Like, because I really don't know. I mean, unless, yeah, it was like when she refurnished the living room or, you know, but really it was like, I I don't know. There's a lot of crap in the Mm -hmm. house. Um, We had a yard sale once and it was just so much crap. And I'm just like, where does this stuff even come from? You know, a lot of little stuff. She always liked, you know, 
fancy makeup, expensive makeup, um, nice clothes and stuff. And I think once she had lost the weight too, she started going crazy with clothes because she could finally fit into things. And your things. dad was still with her through this whole oh, yeah. time, right? My okay. dad never left. Okay. My dad would constantly pick up the pieces, pay people off, you know. Um, they would have a big fight. She would start crying. She would say, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. And then the cycle would continue. Yeah. My dad never left. Um, and I think in his mind, he was thinking, I have to stay here for these girls. Mm-hmm. Like, I have to keep the family together. I said vows, you know. Like, right. he took all that stuff very seriously. Um, he wasn't just going to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, years later, I did tell him, I'm like, hey, dad, like, thank you for staying because. Right. If he would have left, then, right. Then you really don't It would have been way worse. Yeah. Um like on one hand, like all of my friends' parents have gotten divorced, except for like two or three, either when I was really young or in high school or after high school. At this point, most of my friends' parents are divorced. And I remember when, you know, several of them were in the middle of a divorce, I was kind of looking around like, are you guys going to get divorced? Mm-hmm. Or like, when's our turn? You know? And I remember thinking like, like you guys fight all the time about money and you don't really seem like happy. Like, I mean, I'm not seeing into other people's lives, but this doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, our household doesn't seem like healthy. Like, again, I couldn't pinpoint it. I couldn't nail it down of like, this is what this is or, but I just knew like, this isn't right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm looking around like my friend's parents are getting divorced and they seemed way more normal than we do. Yeah. Like, why aren't you guys at yeah. this point? Yeah. So I'm like, why aren't you guys getting a divorce? Like, mm-hmm. you know. And I remember, like, thinking about that and thinking, well, if they did get divorced, I would have to stay with my dad because he would provide stability. I knew, And this was when I was, like, 10. Like, I was pretty young yeah. thinking about this. And I'm like, if I picked mom, yeah, we'd have a lot of fun. We would do stuff. We would get stuff. We would have a lot of fun. But it wouldn't be stable and we'd probably get kicked out of an apartment or, you know, lose our car. Um, So I knew I was like, kind of like, well, if they do get divorced, I'll just stay with dad. It'll be boring. We won't get as many toys, but it'll be secure and I'll have stability. Yes. Because my dad was a parent. Mm -hmm. Um, He was a parent. My mom was not a parent. A lot of times it was like my dad had three daughters because he had me and my sister and my mom. And especially when she was financially just blowing it up, you know, he would come in and clean up the mess and they'd have a big fight. She'd cry, um, but he would always just fix everything and it would just start over. And I'm assuming, you know, she would kind of, you know, lie low for a little bit, but then it would just start up again. Yeah. And yeah, after so many times, she's learning that she can get away with it, you know, um, so she spent all the money for my co- my sister's college. And then my sister had to come home for and take a year off. Um, and then she actually ended up having to transfer schools uh, to one that was less, it was in-state. So they could afford the tuition. Um, even though that other school she went to was her dream school. Yeah. And my mom had said, I would do anything for my daughter to go there. Okay, well, that's what you said, but that's not what you did. You did the exact opposite. You did anything to make sure she couldn't go there. Um, And my sister really kind of took that in stride. And she was very disappointed, but she was just like, well, what are you going to do? She's like, oh, you know, it's okay. And when she transferred, she, I mean, she's graduated and she really enjoyed both schools she went to. And she was like, you worked out. And I'm like... I'm like, no, that's not the point. Right. I'm like, that's not the point here. Like, I feel like I was more upset about it than she was. And in a lot of ways, I was like, you're the daughter that she's supposed to like. Like, if she had done that to me, I would have understood more. But she did it to you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what? I'm like, that, that didn't make any sense to me. Because literally, I'm like, if you did this to me, I would get it 100%. You don't like me. I call you out on your crap. Like... I would understand that. I'm like, but you did it to the daughter you're supposed to really love and care about. You did it to your number one. Like, why? Why would you do that, you know? And I was living at home at this point, 
And um, one night she didn't come home from work. And I remember kind of, you know, starting to worry. Like it was like 10 at night. And I'm like, where's my mom? Mm -hmm. Like this seems weird. Um, So I'm like texting her. You know, I try calling her. I'm like, where are you? Like I'm kind of worried. Um, And then later, later that night she calls me and she's like, I'm I, I, I checked myself into a psychiatric hospital. So I just felt so guilty about what I did. I, I was going to drive my car off a bridge or something. So she felt guilty. She spent all the money for her college. And then she checked herself into this place. And, you know, I ended up having to, like, drive her clothes and stuff. Like, it was weird. It was really weird. Um I mean, I was like, you know, I remember talking to her on the phone, like almost about to cry because I'm like, okay, I'm really freaked out about this. Um, I hope you're okay. How like, long was she there for? She was there like a week maybe. Okay. It wasn't super long, but um, it was long enough where, yeah, I had to bring her some change of clothes and stuff because she just showed up. She just showed up. Um, and when she was there, it came out that, she'd been lying to her therapists this whole time. So these years that she'd been in therapy, she was lying. She wasn't telling them the whole truth. She was just going to therapy, but... Like in what way was she lying? Like she wasn't telling the truth. Like she wasn't, you know, she was going to therapy, Mm -hmm. but she wasn't actually doing therapy. Okay. She was withholding information. Got it. Or, you know, not telling her therapist. about how she was feeling and the things that she was doing? I guess. I mean, I don't know the details, but I just know she told me like, yeah, I was lying to my therapist. Okay. So she wasn't getting the help she needed. The whole point of therapy is to be honest. And to open up. And to open up and be honest with yourself about what's really going on. And she Mm -hmm. wasn't doing that. It's like she was going to therapy just to say she was doing it. Right. But she she couldn't be honest with herself. And Well, probably too, based on what you said, maybe she was just telling the therapist what she would want people to think of her in here, yeah. not actually what was happening. Yeah, like she was building up a character. Yeah. But I'm like, what's the point of that? I'm like, why would you go to a therapist and lie? Like, what are you getting out of that? What are you getting out of that? Like, what's the point of that? I really don't know. Because well, obviously somebody- you know... The thing is, too, is if she really, you know, if she was bipolar and had things going on mentally, it's not ever going to be something that's going to make sense to you. You know what I mean? Of why she would do those things. Yeah, that's true. You know, I so just it's like to in me, her mind, yeah. it probably made sense. But Maybe. to other people, it's not going to make sense because if you if your brain doesn't operate the way that somebody else, you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. people that will lie and genuinely believe their own lies because yeah. they're just not well. You know, and it's like, we'll never understand. And we're like, why would you lie about something so small and so stupid? But to them, it made sense. It wasn't even a lie. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's what I notice a lot too. It's like, it's difficult because I think we try so hard to understand why, but sometimes we never really get the answer we're looking for because we'll never know why. They don't even know why. And if they don't know why, we're never going to know. I think that's a good point. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's But obviously it's your mom, so it's going to drive you crazy. Yeah. And it's going to upset you and piss you off because it is something that you hold closer because even though you guys didn't have a relationship, what hurts your sister or even what would hurt your mom would still hurt you. So obviously you're going to always want those answers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm watching all of this happen. I'm, I've am i been, you know, it's like, okay, you went to the talking doctor when I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. You've been doing this my whole life. Obviously, you know, like you take medication, you admit that you have these problems. Why aren't you actively trying to fix them? But I think what you said is true. Like maybe she is, but she's not capable. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. And also a lot of times, like if something's genuinely wrong, you can't fix yourself. You know what I mean? You can't even, you don't even know where to start to fix yourself. Right. Right. And I think you kind of said earlier too, like who even knows if she was realizing what she was doing. And maybe after the point she might have, at times she probably did feel guilty and feel like, well, you know, she couldn't go through college because of me. But at the same time, it's like if something's wrong mentally in your in your head and in your brain, you might not be able to stop those things in the moment, you know? Yeah. 
sorry. No, you're okay. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's been my whole life of like, I just don't understand her. Her decisions, the things she does, doesn't make sense to me. And yeah, I don't know if that's, it's because that's how her brain works or, you know, we're just so different that I'll never understand. Um, or if she really, does she, is she even aware of what she's doing? Um, but, but yeah, the, the college thing was like, that was really bad. That was like this huge thing that blew it everything up. And I, I just, yeah, I'm like, if you did this to me, I would get it. But you did it to my sister who really loves you and cares about you. And she even like forgave her essentially. Um, but I think that was the first time when my sister was really like, oh, maybe mom isn't who I thought she was. Maybe Sarah's right about some of this, you know, um, and, you know, my sister will say, like, oh, it all worked out. I'm fine. You know, I have a job now. It's fine. I graduated. I'm fine. But again, it's like, that's not the point. Okay. Mm-hmm. So she did that. And then my sister went back to school. Um, and, you know, I moved out. My sister went to school and she was on track um, to, you know, get a job, move out, all that. And, my mom, I guess she kind of just started spiraling on her own of just like, okay, empty nest. Like I've been a mom for, you know, 30 years almost. And, you know, I'm with this guy and, you know, like my parents never had like a loving relationship, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say. Um, like they got together because of me. I don't really think they were meant to be together by any means. I think they just made the responsible decision to stay together because of me and then they have my sister. Um, So once we were gone, I think to my mom, it was like, oh, well, what now? Um, So she ended up like going back to school, like at a community college. She was like, I'm going to finish my degree. And she got really into that. Um, And I don't, think she ever finished it like she only had like a semester left or something it was not a lot and she never like she still didn't finish Mm -hmm. so I'm like why are you you know why are you doing these things um and then and then it got to a point where I really thought that they were content I really thought my mom was content in her life and everything was fine you know um So it was kind of like the calm before the storm sort of a thing where I really thought, you know, I'd moved out. My sister was away at college and about to, you know, graduate and get a job and stuff. And I really thought, oh, good. My parents are fine. You know, my mom seems content. Like they'll just get old and, you know, we'll visit holidays and whatever. Um, My mom decided she wanted to buy a puppy and they bought a puppy Um, and then, and then it happened. Um, then I, one night I got a phone call from my dad and I was asleep. It was like midnight. I was asleep. I got woken up my phone. I look at it, it says dad. And I think, why is my dad calling me? Like what? I kind of, you know, was like, ah, I just want to go back to bed. And then I get the little notification that I got a voicemail. And then then I was thinking, great. Now I'm like, what if it's something bad? I'm like, why is my dad calling me at midnight? I'm like, maybe somebody got hurt or something. So I'm like, okay, I'll listen to the voicemail and I'll go from there. Right. So I listen to this voicemail and it's basically, he's like, Sarah, uh, I'm telling you this because I told your sister, uh, I'm kicking your mom out of the house. I'm just sick of her crap. And I'm just kicking her out. And th- that's it. I just want to tell you. So I'm like, what? I'm like, that's a weird voicemail to get from my dad. Um, so I'm like, okay, whatever. They just had a fight and she's staying in a hotel. Whatever. I'll deal with this tomorrow, right? So I, you know, wake up the next day. Um, I think about calling my mom, but I'm like, yeah, I'll just text her because I got to go to work. I'm like, I'll just text her, make sure she's fine, you know. Um, so I send her a text and then, you know, I get to work, start you know, doing stuff and she doesn't respond, you know, um, I send her another text like, Hey, are you okay? Just want to make sure everything's fine. Dad called me last night, you know, um, no response. Um, I'm kind of starting to worry a little bit like what's going on. Cause you know, 
I really have no clue. I just Mm -hmm. get this weird voicemail from my dad and I have no idea what that means or what's going on. Um, And then I get a text from my dad and it says, have you heard from your mother in the past like, you know, 37 hours or something like that? And I'm like, no. And then, um, you know, I'm like in the middle of work and I'm like, you know, sorry, I I need to, you know, call my dad real quick. So I get him on the phone and he's like, yeah, uh, I haven't. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, what's going on? Like, because I have no clue. I have no context. And he's like, well, we were supposed to meet at a wedding last night. Um, It was after work. She was supposed to meet me there and she never showed up. And then she never came home. He thought she was just blowing him off just to be a bitch or just to be like, oh, that's right, whatever. Um, so that's why what prompted the voicemail he left me. Um, but then she just never came home. The next morning, you know, he hasn't heard from her. She's not responding. So then he's like, I'm starting to worry and think that something happened. Like maybe she was in a car crash or something. I don't know. Um, so then I'm really freaked out, you know, and... I'm like, I can only imagine how my sister's feeling. And because at this point, she had moved like out of state. She's totally alone. Um, And, you know, I'm like, great. Like, what the hell? So I try calling her again. No response. I try texting her. Nothing. My dad decides he's going to call the police and file a report. And then I get a call from my sister. And she's like, yeah, I just talked to the cops. And I gave them your number. And they're going to call you. So I just wanted to let you know that if you get a weird phone number calling you to answer it, and that's who it is. So I'm like, great. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. You know? Um, So the police call me and they're like, oh, you know, is, you know, asking me all these questions like, is this, uh, you know, does this sound like something your mom would do? And they're like, I'm like, no, like, this is totally uncharacteristic. I have no idea what's going on. I'm like, I don't even live there. I, I just got a voicemail from my dad that she didn't show up to something and now she's, we don't know where she is. Um, and they're like, we understand she wants some money in a, a, a settlement. Do you think that anyone would be after her for the money? And I'm like, no, like, I, I don't know. I'm like, she doesn't really have many friends or anything. Like, I really have no clue, but it just freaked me out. Um, And, you know, so I hang up with them and they're like, okay, you know, we're going to do our investigation, whatever. Um, And I'm just sitting there freaking out at this point. And I'm like telling my coworkers like, hey, this is the situation. And they're all just like, geez, like, that's really heavy. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I hope they find her, you know, I don't know what's going on. Um, And then finally, a few hours go by, mom on my phone. So I'm like, okay. So she pick up the phone. Oh, well, no, before before she called me, actually, I had texted my boyfriend to tell him what's going on. And he suggested, he was like, oh, have your dad check his bank account because maybe she spent money on his card and that can give you clues to where she is. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, that's really smart. So my dad checks and there's a charge for an airline and then there's a charge for an Uber in San Francisco. And we're like, why would she be in San Francisco? Like, Mm -hmm. we don't know anybody there. Like, we went there once for, like, a family vacation, like, years ago. But we don't know anybody there. Like, why the hell would she be there? Obviously, you know, those are the clues we have. We can assume she's in San Francisco. I don't know why. Um, So then she calls me, and I pick up, and I'm like, what the hell, dude? I'm like, yeah. And at this point, I know where she is, but I just want to see if she'll tell me, you know? And she's all, Sarah, oh, well, uh, I just, uh," I'm like, spit it out. I'm like, tell me what's going on, you know? Um, She's like, well, I'm with a guy that I met online, and he lives in San Francisco, and I'm with him. I'm like, okay. Why didn't you tell anybody that? Mm -hmm. Like, why did you run away? And her and your dad were still together at this point. Yes, they're still married. Yeah. I don't even care about the right. affair part at this point. I'm like, whatever. That's the least of my right. worries. Because the cops are involved now. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, we th- we all think you died, okay? Like, what? you have no regard for anybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I'm like, just spit it out. She's all like stuttering. Like, oh, well, uh, well uh, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And she's like, well, I just couldn't, I couldn't show up to that wedding and pretend I was in a happy marriage. I just couldn't do it. I'm like, so you make up something else. So you make up a different lie then, right. lady. You don't just not show up and let us think you died. Yeah. I'm like, my sister is freaking out, crying, I'm sure, having a breakdown. And dad called the cops. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, oh, 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 God. And I like could hear it in her voice that like that hit her, that like she didn't think that was going to happen somehow. And I'm like, hey, yeah, dad called the police. Because maybe she doesn't care, but like. You guys are normal people who do care if somebody exactly doesn't. But like she didn't think, someone. yeah, she didn't think that anyone would call the police right. if she went missing. Like she was literally expected to show up somewhere and she didn't. So yeah, that's what happens. And then that's when I kind of clicked in my mind. Oh, she called me first. She didn't call my dad. You know, she's got her phone blown up with all messages from her whole family, and she called me first. And that kind of said something to me that like she knew. Maybe I was the easiest one to break this news to Mm -hmm. because she knows that I'm just up front and kind of detached. Right. Um, So I'm like, yeah, dad called the cops. Like, you have to you have to deal with this now. Like, I'm like, I don't care if whatever you're having an affair, whatever. That's literally the least of my worries. But we we thought you died. Okay. like you created this big mess. You have to clean it up. Like, what are you doing? Like, you, you make up a different lie, you know? And then I'm like, why didn't you respond to us? Like, what's going on? She's like, well, my phone died. I'm like, so you get a damn charger. I'm like, you go into any store and you buy a phone charger. You don't just go missing. Mm-hmm. Like, if I had done any of the things that she did, she'd be furious. But here you are, a 50-year-old woman running around like you're 16 just thinking there are no consequences for any of your actions. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, lady? Like, this is insane. So I'm like, call dad, please, and call your other daughter because they're both freaking out. Please tell call dad so he can get the cops to, you know, end their search. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, now you're like, you know, I'm like, this is so crazy. I'm like, well, my phone died. And, oh, I just, I just had to be with this guy. I'm like, okay, whatever. So... I hang up with her and then, you know, she calls my dad. She calls my sister. She talks to the police. That's all settled. And then I just get a text from my dad that says, your mother's in San Francisco. She's met someone. We're getting a divorce. Which I kind of already knew, but, you know, he was just letting me know that. Um, And I'm just like, I can't believe that. I just just so shocked. I'm like, what? They had happened so fast. Yeah. And I never would have imagined someone to be with my mom like like i'm like who's dating my mom like right i mean i just know too much and i'm like she's a crazy person Mm -hmm. but i'm like who i'm like that's the real story who's this guy you know Um, what's wrong with him yeah i'm like what the hell man (laughs) yeah so she did that and that basically blew up the family that was just like that was it that was the big explosion of like okay you did that. There's no going back from that. And that was like the deal breaker for my dad. You know, um, he sent her an email that he also sent to me and my sister just so that we'd know what was going on. And, you know, it said at the top of it, it was like, hey, I know you guys don't want to be involved in this, but I just want you to know what's happening. So I'm sending this to you too. And it was really heartbreaking. And, you know, I could just tell, like, it literally broke his heart and he just didn't see this coming out of nowhere. And, like, he's not an emotional guy. He doesn't really let us see how he's feeling. But, I mean, it almost made me cry reading this email because I'm like, Jesus, like, this really, he's like, I thought we would grow old together and I thought everything was fine. And, you know, he's like, all these years of financial abuse this, this hurts a thousand times worse than the, that ever has. Like, of all the stuff you've ever done to me, nothing has ever hurt me like this. And then he said, I know I kind of fought you on getting the dog, but please leave me the dog so I can have a little bit of love left in my life. And that was just so sad. I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Um, so, 
you know, and then he just went through like very, very straightforward of like, hey, this is what we should do. This is how much the house is worth. And, you know, this is how we're going to split things up, you know, yada, yada. Um, so it was like, okay, they're going to get a divorce. Finally, I think they should have gotten a divorce earlier and, you know, in a much more clean way. Um, but I don't think, I think my dad didn't want to bother. He was just content with his life. And mm -hmm. I think my mom was too afraid to let go of. Well, that was her like security blanket. Exactly. Yeah. Like she, she had it good with him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that she realized how good she had it with him. Um, so, you know, she ended up, you know, just cheat, which a lot of people do that. Like they're too cowardly to just break up. They'll just cheat and then let it break it up. Um, so she did that. And then it was like, okay, they're finally going to get a divorce. All right, here we go. Um, so then she's still living at the house. Um, she actually took over my room like, like a long time ago. My parents hadn't slept in the same bed in like decades. So she was like, in my room and turned that room into her room. Um, and she like texted me, oh, can you come over and help me pack? So I'm gonna get my apartment. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, yeah, I gotta do laundry anyway. Like, okay, fine. And I go over there and she's just manic. She's just in this ultimate manic state and she's just being crazy. And she's like, oh my God, Sarah, like how many boyfriends am I supposed to have? Because I have like four and I have to pick which one I want. And I just look at her and I'm like, you're not supposed to have any boyfriends because you're my mom, okay? Like that's it. And then she's just like, ah, whatever. And it's just clearly like, she's acting like a little kid. It's weird. It's really weird. She's just being crazy. Um, and I just remember thinking like, what happened to you? Because, I mean, I've seen you do crazy stuff before. I've seen you in a lot of different states, but this is something new. This was like new level of like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, and so then I'm helping her fake pack. And, you know, she's like, oh, put that stuff in these boxes and do this and this. And it was all a bunch of like arts and craft supplies and stuff. It was like not actual packing. It was just boxing up stuff that was in the room. And then she's like, oh, just just put those down the hall for now. And I'm like, OK. So I pack up a bunch of boxes, like four boxes. And then like she just wanted me to be over there so she could just show off her single life or something. I don't know. I don't really know. Because obviously like actually packing that's not why I was there. Yeah. She wanted me over there to like show off and it was just weird. So I got out of there fast. I'm like, dude, I don't, okay, here, I helped you pack, whatever. And she didn't even have an apartment lined up. Like, she didn't even have an apartment. Mm -hmm. She had no plan. She had nowhere to move this stuff to. Um, and it was just weird. Um, so time goes by and she does eventually move out. Um, but she doesn't move all her stuff out. Like my dad ended up having to pack her stuff for her because she just wasn't, she was just dragging her feet. Like, okay, you want to move out? Like, we'll move you out. You know, I, I believe my dad was paying for the apartment too. Yeah. So he gets her this apartment and it's like downtown or something. And, you know, it's like, okay, you can go live your little single life, but like do what you want. And like, yeah, he had to pack a bunch of her stuff. And, you know, I'm like, oh, what's up with that? I'm like, his mom moved out yet? And he's like, no, she won't get all her crap. So I have to do it for her because I just want her out. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just want her out of here. Like, I just want to move on. So I'm having to pack. Um, and then eventually, like, he had to tell her, like, hey, if you want the rest of your stuff, you have until this day to get it or I'm getting rid of it. That's it. And, you know, she's just making excuses. Oh, well, whatever. Oh, I, you know, okay, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get my stuff. And, you know, he gave her like a month or something. And she never came and got her stuff. So my dad threw it away. I mean, she just had piles of crap. Just so much stuff. Right. She never came and got. And we're like, we gave you plenty of time. You know, we gave her plenty of time. She never came and got it. So, okay, obviously you didn't really care. Um. And um, so when she ran away, that was like September. So 
we had one last Christmas where we were all together. And that was the last time I actually saw her was that Christmas. And it was one of those things where like it was up until now, even. No, this this was just this before. was two Christmases ago. Okay. So not this past Christmas, but the one before. That was the last one where we were all together. And, you know, normally Christmas was like my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. It was like this big deal and it was like all day. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. You know, I'm like, okay, Christmas is over. That's fine. Whatever. I had a good run. Um, so my sister and my dad were like, well, it's your birthday. So like, what do you want to do here? And I'm like, I guess let like just go out to dinner or something i was like how about we just go to like cheesecake factory you know on christmas eve right because they're open um and we said i get you know i'm like yeah we can invite mom i don't know if she wants to be there or what but you know we can invite her um and she said uh well because it's sarah's birthday i guess I'll, i'll come so we go over there i go over there christmas morning afternoon and we do presents and stuff and you know it's all seemingly normal and then we open presents and then my mom kind of disappears and she's like on her phone the whole day Mm -hmm. like really obviously on her phone and um like doing that thing where you kind of show your phone where you like want people to see like oh i'm texting that's right Mm -hmm. As if we care, you know? I'm like, this is just really gross. Um, And she's on her phone all day. We open presents. And, like, when I, like, I got her something that was, like, it was, like, a magnet for her purse where it's, like, if you go out, you can use the magnet to Mm -hmm. put your purse on the table instead of having it on the ground, right? And she's just like, what is this? Like, oh, thanks. And then my sister had gotten her some, like, autographed celebrity thing. And she was like, oh, my God. I can't believe it. Oh my God, best person ever. And it was just really obvious. Like, okay, you don't care what I got you. That's great. Um, That's awesome. And then she's freaking out over the thing my sister got her, which was like some autographed photo or whatever. Um, Just painfully obvious. I'm like, okay, all right. I wish I just would have got you nothing then. Okay. Um, And then she kind of disappears, like, you know, goes upstairs. We don't know where she is. And then she comes back downstairs to like go on her Peloton and it's just in the other room. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what is this? Like, why are you even here? Like, Mm -hmm. you're not with our family. You're just in your own world right now. And then eventually we're like, hey, like we're leaving for dinner. Are you going to come with us? She's like, yeah, I'm coming. I'm like, okay, well, you're literally sweaty on a Peloton right now. So sorry, I didn't think you were actually going to get ready and come. Um, so she gets all ready and then we go to the restaurant and while we're waiting for the table, she's kind of like flirting with my boyfriend and it was really weird. He's really tall and she was like, like looking at him like, how tall are you? You know? And I'm like, I can see what's going on. And I'm like, this is gross. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is nasty. And the whole time she's like showing off her phone, um, and I'm like, this is weird. It's just weird. It's like she was there, but she wasn't there. It's like, that's not my mom. Mm-hmm. She's just turned into some different person. Um, which, like, that's fine. If you want to go do that, like, I don't care. You know, I'm not going to stop you. It's not like you were ever a real mom to me anyway. But, like, this is weird, okay? Like, either be here or don't. Mm-hmm. This halfway. And it crosses lines and boundaries that shouldn't be crossed as a mother, but. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So it's just like, this is weird. And then at one point, like, you know, having dinner and she's like, Sarah, I want to get another tattoo. I want to get words. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, what do you want? And then like, I think my dad or my sister like made a joke like, oh, our last name with a big X over it. Um, And she's like, "Ah, that's not very funny. I'm like, oh, isn't it though? Like, are you kidding me? Like, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And I'm just like, yeah, no, I'm not. Like, we're not doing that, okay? Um, and that's the last time I ever saw her. Um, Did you guys stay in touch at all, like, over text or call or no? We texted a few times. Um, and I'm assuming you never met any of the boyfriends. No. So she wanted me to. So mm-hmm. the, that guy in San Francisco, whenever I was helping her fake pack, 
she was like, I was like, so you moving in with that guy? Like, what's going on? She's like, no, I broke up with him. I loved him. I did. But I broke up with him because long distance was just too hard. I'm like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? Okay. Um, But then she was, yeah, then she's like, oh, I'll just get, you know, I have a bunch of boyfriends. I got to pick one. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I don't really know how many guys she's dated or whatever. I have no clue. Um, I know she got another new boyfriend. And so I I had texted her for Mother's Day because I was like, you know, it's the least I can do. I'll Mm -hmm. just text her like, hey, happy Mother's Day, whatever. Um, And then she was like, oh, thanks, Sarah, you know, whatever. Um, And then she like invited me to go get dinner with her. She's like, oh, you can see my new apartment. We can get dinner. And I said, okay, like, I guess. Yeah. Um, So we set a time or a day, whatever. And. Then she tries to, like, force the boyfriend on me. And it's like, oh, and my boyfriend's going to come and you can meet him. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, no. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, I, I don't feel comfortable meeting someone that you've only known for a couple months. My mistake, sorry, I thought you actually wanted to see your daughter. Um, and, you know, I wasn't sure what she was going to say to that. Because I was just very honest. And I'm like, yeah, no. Like, I'm putting a boundary up here. I'm not doing that. I didn't say I would never meet him, but I I am not ready to meet him now. Um, I agreed to have dinner with you. Mm-hmm. That's it. So then she reluctantly was like, okay, fine. Yeah, no, I do want to see you because I haven't seen you since Christmas and blah, blah, blah. But I could tell that it was just, you know, she was just saying that just to manipulate me. Um and then, you know, it's like the day before or whatever, and she cancels. And then we reschedule, and then she cancels again. And this goes on like three or four times to where eventually I'm like, okay, I'm kind of starting to believe that this whole dinner thing is never going to happen. Um, and then she's like, well, you know, it's just been really hard. I got a lot going on. And, you know, I didn't have money one time, and then I was sick. And then I'm like, okay, like, you don't need to make a bunch of excuses. Like, if you can't afford to do it or whatever like just tell me that like that's Mm -hmm. fine you don't need to keep pretending that we're gonna meet up and have dinner when we weren't going to like okay that's fine yeah and I think she never wanted to do that because she couldn't I didn't want to meet the boyfriend she wanted me to approve of her new lifestyle Mm -hmm. she wanted to show off her new boyfriend to me and get me to approve of it she did not care to actually just see me and catch up with me. She didn't care about that. Yeah. She wanted to show off her new life, her new fancy apartment, and her new boyfriend. And when I didn't want to do that, then w- there was no use. There was no point. So so that happened. And um, then I'm, you know, talking to my dad some. And it turns out she never filed the divorce papers she said she did but she didn't she just had him sign them and then never did anything with them and i think that was to just keep my dad as a backup plan yeah like if we don't actually get divorced well then i still have him and i can just go running back to him because he's taken me back all these other times so my dad hired a lawyer and actually got that all taken care of Um, and got the divorce to go through, and they are divorced. Um, So they got officially divorced, and um, in the divorce, they had agreed that my dad would, I believe it would, he would pay for her apartment, and then he would pay for her phone plan, because we were all still on, like, the family plan. And so he was still, he's still paying for our plans and then hers. My mom was the account holder. Because when we had set this up, you know, back in the day, it was her email address. She was in charge of it. She was, Mm -hmm. like, in charge of all the bills, all that stuff. Um, So it was in her name. So, and my phone, for some reason, is, like, one of the main phones. So I'll get the texts that say, like, your bill is due. You know, hey, Mm -hmm. please pay this amount. Um, And I kept getting these messages. And I just forwarded them to my dad, you know. Um. And I, you know, I forward him one of these messages. It's like, hey, you owe $600. And he's like, I just paid this. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell? And I'm like, hey, I don't know. I just, 
I just get the messages and pass it along. So it turns out my mom had been adding her boyfriend and his kids to our family phone plan and just making my dad pay for them. Um, and then I found out she used, I had an eligible upgrade. Me and my sister could both upgrade our phones and she stole our upgrades to get her boyfriend and his kids brand new iPhones. All while my dad's paying for this. Mm -hmm. And he's like, whoa, like, what the hell? Yeah, it's like she just doesn't have any care or concern about anything or anyone else. Yeah. She's going to live her life and do whatever she wants. Like, it makes me wonder, like, if that's coming from, like, a selfishness or if it's coming from, like, another place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where it comes from. Right. I don't know why. Like, is it something that's just on top of being bipolar and depressed? You know what I mean? It, like, I makes don't, you wonder. Yeah, I don't know if this is just she really thinks that this is okay. Right, and she can get Or if with she's it. doing it because she knows it's not okay and she's doing it to be mean or to, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, because she did it multiple times. Like, mm-hmm. he would take them off of the phone plan and she would re-add them. Right. She would keep doing this. It's like, are you aware of what you're doing or? Obviously she's aware and obviously she knows that, you know, but I don't know if like my dad removing them, is that her, her adding them back? Is that her thinking, oh, this is annoying. I have to keep adding them back. Or is it like, man, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to do it. Right. You know, I I have no clue. I don't know. Um, Have you ever like tried to talk to her about anything or has it always just been something that you've kind of just accepted, okay, this is the way my mom is and I'm just going to keep being distant and pushing forward. I tried to talk to her one time um, after I dropped out of college and I had lost a lot of weight. And I was, I had, I had lived with roommates and stuff and then I had moved back home and I was briefly living at home again. And, and uh, instead of, like congratulating me for losing all the weight or hey you look good she accused me of using cocaine to drop the weight and then she confronted me in my room and she's like oh, you're using cocaine and i'm going to test you know the surfaces and i'm get you know you've you know as if there's no other way that i could have lost weight it had to have been me abusing drugs um and i confronted her and i was like hey i was like look here lady i was like you made me fat and I lost the weight and how dare you? Like, what the hell, dude? And it was just like one of those things where she's like, oh, well, I tried my hardest, okay? I did the best that I could. And, you know, if that wasn't good enough, well, oh, I guess I'm just a bad mom. Like nothing really got through. No, it's impossible. You can't talk to her because even if you try, she just sees it as an attack. If I were to try to genuinely tell her these things, She wouldn't listen. She would just think, you're attacking me. Even if, you know, I genuinely tried to come to her and say, hey, this is how I feel. Laid it all out. Like, it's not going to get through to her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I realized that a long time ago. So I just don't try. So, yeah, that one time I did, you know, try and be like, hey, this is what you did to me. And this is how I responded. And, you know, like, you're not going to just accuse me of using drugs because I lost weight that you made me put on when I was a kid. Like, what the hell? Like, I literally hated myself for years and years. And then I lose the weight. And then you're going to come at me and say, you must have been abusing drugs. Mm -hmm. Like, what? So, yeah, there's... There's no, there's no point in trying to talk to her and, you know, cause that was like the only time that I really was like, you know what, I'm just going to tell her the truth and just lay this out here and see what happens. And it didn't, it doesn't get through to her. Yeah. There's no getting through to her. So I just don't, um, I'm better off not in her life and just looking at the times when like, when I live in the same house with her. Versus when I don't, way better when I don't live there. Yeah. Even my dad said something like that. Like, you think, you know, either when I had moved out to go to college or when I was living with my friend, he did say something. He's like, yeah, you and your mother, 
your relationships just it's just better when you guys don't live in, under the same roof yeah um well it's also it just sounded very toxic you know like even if i don't know i just feel like the the lack of connection that you guys had and just the constant of like you said not knowing what side of her you were gonna get it's toxic and it's mentally draining yeah. to be around a situation or even a person like that so yeah exactly and that's i think that's why i avoided being around her mm -hmm. when i did you right. know i mean i knew like okay i have to be in the same house as her it's more of an effort to be around her than yes it is to just it's not. yeah you don't know which side of her you're gonna get yeah and then it's like okay you know what do we got to deal with here mm -hmm. um if she's in a bad mood it's like okay then i have to be i was just constantly on edge yeah. like okay how do i have to react to how she is right now right you know um and it was just a lot yeah she, she's just a toxic person to mm -hmm. me and i just i can't do it um um and after i dropped out of college i briefly worked at the same office that she worked at and it was just insane to see how fake she was in person so like, and that's interesting to me too that the fact that she was able to kind of put on that front for other people like it's not like this was just who she was in every circumstance like she genuinely was able to put on a mask almost yes it was it was people. like it so was she was aware of what she was doing if she was able to do that yeah it was that fake voice on the phone but it was in person mm -hmm. you know um i worked kind of in the back um at this office doing like paperwork online and stuff and she was a receptionist and i could just just seeing her interact with the people and who came and then the people who worked there i'm like this is ridiculous yeah you could see right through it i could see right through it and i'm just like none of these people really know the real her mm -hmm. and it was interesting when she would interact with me because she couldn't be mean to me she couldn't be her real self yeah. because then everybody would see she had to be this fake version of herself um you know and it was just ridiculous mm -hmm. um i remember one time actually it was like we were on the lunch break and she had given me like an extra gift card that she got and was like hey i'm not gonna use this like i don't know if, even if she paid for it she just got it so whatever she was like here's this extra gift card right and I was like, okay, thanks. That's cool. Um, and I went to the mall with my friend and we went into the store that the gift card was for and she really wanted something. There was this thing she really wanted and I was like, hey, I'll get it for you with this gift card. I'm like, I'm not going to use it. I don't really have a need for it mm -hmm. right now. And you really want that, so I'll get it for you, you know? My mom found out that I did that and she was furious. She was so mad. And she like gave me the silent treatment at work over it. And I'm like, I'm sitting there laughing at her. I'm like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you gave me that gift card as a gift, yeah. okay? Once you give me that gift, it is up to me what I choose to do with that. If I wanted to use that gift card to buy something and then give that thing to my friend, I'm allowed to do that, right. okay? Just because you gave me this gift card does not mean you get to dictate how I use it. Mm -hmm. And again, it was like buying stuff and holding it over my head or, you know, like she always did that. She would always, well, I guess you don't love me because you're not behaving right now. And I had bought you that thing last week or, well, I took you to that concert. I guess you don't care about me because you're not doing what I want right now. Don't you yeah. remember I did that thing for you before? Just constantly doing that. And this was like an extension of that. Right. Where I'm like, you know, and I would call her out on that too. Like early on, I'm like, Stop buying me stuff then. If you're going to just buy me something just to use it against me, then don't buy it for me. Mm -hmm. Just don't. I'd rather you buy me nothing than buy me something I really want that's going to be used against me. Right. Like, I'm so sick of this. Like, no, I'm done. Mm -hmm. um, and it was constantly, it was constant. Oh, well, I guess you don't love me because you don't appreciate that I did this and I did this and I did this. Um, or she would even, like, she wants credit for taking care of me and my sister when we were babies like she said something like that to my sister before like well i guess you don't care that i took care of you when you were an infant like what you that you did the bare minimum that mm -hmm. you had a child and then had to take care of that child you want extra credit for that or something right. 
Like what? And you know, I think it sounds like a sense of like control. It's all Manip- control. Yeah, all control. She has to be in control all the time. The way I mean, all the time. Mm-hmm. That's why she didn't like me because I wasn't willing to just go yeah. along with what she wanted to do. Right. I was going to be my own person mm-hmm. and do what I wanted to do, and I didn't care that she couldn't control me. Right. So you know. And she knew she couldn't control me, so she just gave up on me. Um, After she had moved out uh, of the house, I, you know, I was I was at the house and I, I peeked into her room because I just wanted to see what was still there, and I found the gift I had gotten her for Christmas just thrown on the floor, unopened. And then there was also like this journal that was like laid out, and I you know, kind of scrolled through it a little bit. And then I saw a page that said like, dear Sarah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to read this. Yeah. And she had written it when I had just first kind of moved in with my boyfriend and I had, my sister was home from college and we had taken her out and we went and, you know, went to a bar or something. And she had written this letter to me that was like, well, it hurts me that you want to spend time with your sister, but you don't want to spend time with me. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And this is, so I'm just going to give up on you. This is me giving up on our relationship. And basically blamed me for our non-existent relationship. Yeah. That, how dare you want to hang out with your sister, but you want to invite me to go to the bar with you and your boyfriend. Okay, you're the mom for Mm -hmm. one. No, I don't want to go get drunk with you. Like, that's weird. And, um, like if I want to hang out with my sister, that's a good thing. Okay. That's not bad. But just the fact that she literally wrote, I'm giving up on you. Mm -hmm. And this was like years ago, you know? And I'm like, wow. Okay. Like, that's all I need to know. I'm not going to put any effort into trying to have a relationship with you when you clearly don't care. Yeah. You're putting it all on me. And it's my fault if it doesn't work out. And I'm sure if it does work out, that's because of you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just exhausting. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's not worth it. I'm not getting anything out of this. Um, I can't actually talk to you about anything real. Like, like what's the point, you know? And now that I'm an adult, it's like, I don't, you know, it's not like, oh, I want to get toys and I want to get you to buy me stuff. Yeah, there's no point anymore to... There's, maintain a relationship. Yeah, there's literally nothing there for mm-hmm. either of us. And it's, no it's, benefit. it's better if we're not together. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, just stayed away. Mm-hmm. I didn't talk to her. Um, I tried to go get dinner with her. She kept canceling. Um, and then later she had texted me again and she started, she started the conversation with, did you know your dad has a girlfriend? And I didn't. I was like, no, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, no, I didn't know that. Okay, that's news to me. Um, and she was trying to get me to be mad at him. She was trying to manipulate me into being mad at my dad because he had a girlfriend. At least he only had one and not four that he had to choose between. Yeah, and you're already divorced. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Um, and I guess my dad had, we had our, our dog that had passed away his ashes were in a box on the mantle above the fireplace, okay? And me and my sister had both agreed, like, yeah, we should just bury the ashes, okay? And we just never got around to it. I don't know. So my mom, I guess my dad ended up burying them, and my mom tried to use that against him Mm -hmm. and was, well, did you know he buried the ashes? I'm like, okay. I'm like, I didn't know that, but I mean, that's what I had wanted in the first place, so I'm fine with that, you know? Like, yeah, maybe he could have told us, but what's the problem here, you know? Um, And she's just trying, just texting me, just trying to manipulate me into being mad at him and being on her side and being pissed off that my dad has a girlfriend and he buried those dog's ashes and didn't tell us. And, you know, I'm not taking the bait. And I texted her and I said, um, you know, you're not the only one who's allowed to be happy. You, you started this. You are the one who wanted to get a divorce. You're the one who wanted to see other people 
like you did this to yourself Mm -hmm. okay like yeah dad's allowed to date someone else if he wants to right like i'm not on anybody's side here you know and she's like well you wouldn't meet my boyfriend and i'm like well i haven't met his girlfriend either like that has nothing to do with this and then she was like well and i knew that you didn't know about the girlfriend because he told me he hadn't told you yet like okay then why would you start the conversation accusing me of knowing something that you knew i didn't know right like i can see the manipulation coming out like i can see exactly what you're doing Mm -hmm. like why are you doing this so i'm like you know what no so after that that's when i like hid notifications from her or like i turned it on my phone so like they would appear silently Mm -hmm. because honestly just seeing her name pop up on my screen was like it was like triggering to me yeah I'm like, just seeing mom on the screen, I'm just like, oh God, what do you want? You know? So I just silented it. I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm just like kind of avoiding her. You know, I'm not, I didn't block her, but I'm like, "Ah, I'd rather not talk to you. Okay. So later I go back to the house and um, I go in the basement because I needed to get something. And I don't know if you know what American Girl dolls are. Mm -hmm. So I had two of those and my sister had three. And um, the one doll I had was like my favorite. I had Felicity. She was the best. (laughs) I Mm -hmm. saved up my own money to buy her. And I remember when I I got her in the mail because I was like tracking the shipping Mm -hmm. and there was a tornado and I was like, oh my God, it better get here before the tornado. So these were like really important dolls to me and um they were in the basement and i go in the basement and they're not there there's there's one of my sister's dolls is down there but all the other ones are gone their beds everything there's like a a handful of outfits and stuff they're gone and i knew i i knew it and i didn't want it to be true but i knew my mom took them i knew it and i just just to give her the benefit of the doubt you know i text her i'm like hey where are the american girls and then I even texted my dad. I was like, hey, weird question, but do you know where the American Girl dolls are? And, you know, he's like, no. And then I just knew it. I knew my mom took them. So I try calling her. She doesn't answer. And then I text her more like accusing like, hey, why the hell would you take our dolls? Like, if you took them to sell, like, that's low even for you. Okay. Like, how dare you? And then she comes back at me like, how dare you accuse me of that? I would never. I'm like, okay, well, you did it. I know you did because nobody else took them. Mm-hmm. My sister's out of state and my dad's at work and he doesn't know where they are. And they were in the basement and then there was a bunch of stuff in my sister's closet upstairs and all that stuff was gone too. So I'm like, so you're really expecting me to believe that someone broke into the house went into the basement, took the American girls, went upstairs into one of the bedrooms, took the other remaining furniture and accessories, and then left without stealing anything else. You really expect me to believe that? Um, Because, like, I essentially caught you red-handed, and you're denying it. So that was it. That was the last draw for me. I'm like, I'm done. You steal from me? Something that I literally bought with my own money when I was a child. And after she had made a big deal that her parents never kept any of her toys from her childhood and she spent years rebuying them on eBay. You're going to do that to me? I'm like, "Uh uh-uh. I'm like, you're done. Like, you are not allowed in my life anymore. I'm over this. You're done. So I wait for my dad to come home and I, I, you know, I FaceTime my sister and I tell her, I'm like, hey, all all our dolls are gone. Mom took them. Like, one of your dolls is still here. Um, but that's it. And I'm like, and I'll, I'll grab that one and I'll take it to my house so that she can't get it. Um, and I have expected my dad or my sister to be like, well, she's your mom, you know, don't cut her off. Like, you know, I have expected them to say that to me, but they didn't. They both, my dad just looked at me and said, I understand. Like, I'm sorry. I understand. So I blocked her. I blocked her number. I blocked her everywhere online. I'm done. 
I'm like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, like, how dare you? Because at first I thought she stole them to sell because they do have value. Um, especially like I had just kept my stuff in pristine condition. Like I was an organized child and I kept the outfits packed tight with the, with the tissue paper they came with. Like I could resell those for a lot of money and that's half the reason I had kept it. Um, so I thought she stole them to sell, you know, her years of needing money. It made sense. But then that's when I had learned that her boyfriend had kids and I thought, oh my God, did she give them to some random kid to win this kid over? Like just taking my years of memories and giving them to some kid who's going to totally ruin all this stuff and mess it up and doesn't know the value. I'm like, that's worse to me than if you just sold it to like someone who, you know, would pay good money for that stuff. I'll never get this stuff back. We had hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. And it was like years and years of birthdays, Christmases, you know, from family, from friends. Like, I just, um, I was done. I'm still mad about it. Uh, That was it. That was the last straw. And people, you know, she even said to me, or she said to my sister one time, Sarah won't talk to me over some dolls. And that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I wanted her to say like, so you're admitting you stole them, right? Like, you're admitting it? Because she still won't admit it. She denies it. But she knows. She knows what she did. And, um, like, I can't forgive that. And it might sound stupid, like some dolls, really. But I'm like, but it's everything that led up to that. And you're going to steal from me? Like, no, that's it. Mm. Even my boyfriend was like, yeah, when she stole from you, like, that's next level. Like, that's insane. Like, what the hell? Um, so I blocked her. I'm done. Um, my sister still talks to her a little bit. But I think it's just very surface level because her trust was broken with the college thing. But then when she ran away, that really impacted my sister. Um, so she's just like, okay surface level like hey you know I obviously can't really talk to you about anything serious because you don't care how I feel um and you know and I think my mom has been like kind of lashing out at her now because she has no one else to go to and um she said some crazy stuff to her like you know that's when she was like I want, you know, I took care of you when you were a baby. I did this and this. It's like, okay. And then, you know, she'll say stuff like, you guys will be so much happier when I'm not around. And, you know, saying stuff like suicidal stuff. And I know my mom would never kill herself because she wouldn't be around to see the drama that happens afterwards. Because that's all she cares about is like the drama and seeing other people's reaction to her and like, She'll threaten suicide, sure, but she'll never actually do it. I know it's not a real threat. Um, So all this stuff happens, and I started researching narcissistic personality disorder, and she checks every box. I I don't think she's ever been diagnosed, but she checks every box. And that's the thing with narcissists is that they are the last person to ever think, hey, am I a narcissist? Do I have this? Like, by definition, they won't do that. So I don't think she'll ever get the help she needs. Even if she was doing therapy genuinely and trying to be honest, I don't think she'll ever get help. Um, And, you know, like, she never talked to her mom. Like, growing up, my grandma, we visited her, like, maybe once or twice. Um, She used to live in Chicago, so we would visit there, and she would, like, give us a tour of the city, and, you know, um, when she was the city tour guide, it was cool, but when she moved out of Chicago, we never saw her again, Um, and my mom actually kind of, we referred to her as crazy grandma, because my mom was like, oh, she's crazy, she's crazy, we don't want her in our lives, she's crazy, Um, so we had, you know, crazy grandma that we didn't talk to, never saw, um, but I still kind of talk to her sometimes. I have her number. I'll text her. I ended up telling her, hey, 
my parents are getting divorced, you know, um, and I told her the whole story. And then I've been talking to her um, over the past couple of years. And my grandma has given me a lot of insight into my mom that I never knew. Um, she told me that, you know, when she, when she was in college, she like racked up a, a big phone bill on her roommate's phone that my grandma then had to pay. Um, and then she was dating some guy and they broke up and he went to West Point and my mom, my mom was going to drive her roommate's car back to her house and um, she ended up taking the car and driving to West Point and then tried to get this guy like expelled or something like, you know, went to the disciplinary board because they broke up and she tried to like get back at this guy. Um, so, you know, it's like, oh, she's been doing crazy stuff her whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and then my grandma told me like she was in French class in high school and she lied about going to France and staying there over the summer. And then she got like specially recognized at graduation. And my grandma said that like, she looked at my mom and was like, oh, how was France, huh? And like, why would you lie about that? Like, What's the point of that? And then she told me that my mom had committed check fraud against her own dad who had raised her. And it was like a lot of money to where she could have been charged but he didn't want to charge her at such a young age and give her a record which he probably should have done but he didn't want to do it so learning all of that i was really like oh so she's always been like this well i was gonna to say too i feel like to some degree maybe it could give you a sense of relief in the sense of like she didn't act this way because I was a mistake or because she had me too young. She's always exactly. been this person. I did feel relief. Yeah. I felt like, oh. It was like confirming. This has you. nothing to do with me. Right. This has nothing to do with me or my dad, my family at mm -hmm. all. This is who she is. Yeah. And there's something wrong with her. And, you know, I mean, I, I can only take what my grandma says with a grain of salt, too, mm -hmm. because I wasn't there. I don't right. know. I don't know both sides, um, but I, I did feel relief. I did feel like, oh, okay, this has nothing to do with me at all. Right. I could have been anybody, and mm -hmm. she still would have done all this stuff because she's severely messed up. And um, so, yeah, that was, like, kind of enlightening to realize, like, oh, okay, this is who you are. It has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And then um, – you know, just learning about narcissists and, you know, NPD and all that stuff. And it's like she checks every box. She wants control. She kept her family away from us because they knew the truth about her. Mm -hmm. We never saw my uncles and my grandma when I was a kid because my mom didn't want them around because they could have told us the truth. I guess at my parents' wedding, um, my mom's dad didn't want to walk her down the aisle because of what she'd done to him. And my grandma had to tell him, like, hey, man, like, this is your only daughter. This is your only chance to do this. And they had to talk him into doing it. He didn't want to walk her down the aisle. And, you know, I wish they had told my dad. I wish they had warned him. Yeah. Because she said, she did say, like, they just said, well, good luck. Mm -hmm. She's your problem now. And they didn't warn him about anything. Right. When they should have said like, hey, don't let her have a checkbook. Don't let her be in charge of money. Mm -hmm. Don't let her, you know, be in control of anything financial. Because they didn't warn him and she ruined our whole family. Um, like, I don't, I mean, if I wanted to go buy a house, like, it's going to be difficult mm -hmm. because my credit is bad because right. she ruined it before I could ever have a chance to, to do anything. Build it up. Yeah. Same with my sister. So, I mean, and like my dad can't co-sign on stuff because he had to cl declare bankruptcy once. So like she really ruined our whole family yeah, she's financially a hole. and she doesn't care. Mm -mm. So 
that sucks um so you haven't talked to her since you blocked her no okay and i don't know that she knows i blocked her or if she thinks i'm just ignoring her Mm -hmm. because my sister told me she still does send text messages to our group chat of me my sister and my mom so she'll send messages there and i and she'll like address and how long has it been um it's been a year okay it's been like a little over a year at this point and And honestly you still talk to your dad i still talk to my dad i mean we're not close right but i'm not gonna block him Mm -hmm. because at least he tried to be a parent right i think he kind of feels guilty Mm -hmm. for leaving us with her and you know just all that she's done to us right but I mean, he tried to stay because he had kids. He thought keeping the family together was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, it was, especially when I was younger. You know, I I remember we went out for his birthday. And this was like after everything had happened, a couple months after she ran away. And um, I came over and, you know, he's like, oh, do you want to go get dinner for my birthday? I was like, yeah, sure. And then she tried to invite herself along. She was like, where are you guys going? Can I go? We're like, no, you can't go. And she's like, well, where are you going? Bring me back a steak. We're like, what? You don't even know where we're going. And then mm-hmm. we just wouldn't tell her just to fuck with her. We're like, no, yeah. we're not telling you. Um, and I, I, you know, I told him then. I'm like, hey, thanks for staying. Because if you had left, like, if it was just me and my mom, bad things would have happened. Mm-hmm. I could have ended up, like, in foster care, abused. I could have been, you know, molested by her boyfriends. Like, I don't know. Bad things would have happened, though. We would have got kicked out of apartments. Like, it, it wouldn't have been stable. It wouldn't yeah. have been good at all. Who knows mm-hmm. where I would be. Um, and even when I told my grandma all the stuff that had happened, like, the first word out of her mouth was like, oh, man, your mother's going to end up in the gutter. And to hear her say that about her own daughter, like, I don't yeah. know. That speaks volumes. Mm-hmm. So... I really don't know why my mom is the way she is, but I know she's messed up. I know that she needs help, but I don't know that she's ever going to get it. Mm-hmm. She's been like this her whole life. And I I do believe that it's just her personality is deeply flawed. Well, I think too, you should know that it says a lot about you that you're able to acknowledge everything and still come out strong enough on your own, you know, to like stand tall and almost be a parent. You were a parent in a sense to your sister as well, you know, and you you took on multiple roles like for yourself and for your family. And I think that that says a lot about you. And because a lot of people, like you said, they could have broken down or just kind of like became submissive to a parent that treats them that way and acts that way. Because at the end of the day, when they are our parents – we're taught to respect our parents and follow their rules and follow what they say. So I think that it says a lot about you that you are able to recognize kind of these toxic patterns and not really be disrespectful. But like you said, maintain a certain amount of distance for your own mental health and for your own protection and safety for what you needed to do to get through it, which I think is important. And I think it's even it's like I always say this to people that come on here. I think it says a lot that people are even willing to be vulnerable to speak about, you know, what they've been through. And I know it's tough when it comes to family, especially because at the end of the day, even if they hurt us, they're still our family. So it can be hard and it can make you feel guilty. But I think it's always so important because there's more people than you know that probably have related and have gone through similar things or even felt similar ways of just like, why can't my mom be normal in a sense or like why did it have to go that way but I always say that everything happens for a reason and I know that's a really cheesy sometimes cheesy thing to say but I think that it makes us things that we go through make us stronger and they teach us a lot and now not only did it teach you things but now you're able to help and teach other people by sharing your story and your experience yeah and that is why I wanted to come on Mm -hmm. here I was kind of worried like what if my mom sees this and sees it as an attack against her and she's going to come after me, which she might, but I can't just stay silent. Like, and that's your story and your reality. And you like, you have every right to share that. And you didn't share it. No one comes on here and shares things in like an attacking way. They're sharing it to bring awareness to something that happened. And what happened was very real, you know, and it, 
it sucks in a lot of ways, you know, because it, and it, it did cause you to have, I'm sure a lot of sadness and confusion and, and trauma. So I think if that's something that you can come on and kind of like open up and release that and also shed that light on other people's lives, why not? Yeah. It's not and if somebody sees that as an attack, once, I mean, as you already she's know. She's going to see right. how she sees because it. Because that's how her mind is. And Selfish. Yeah. And I, I mean, once I start, once I talk to my grandma and learned more about who she is and that this is, this is just who she is, it has nothing to do with me. I really did and did start doing this research, you mm-hmm. know, about these personality disorders. And I really did kind of feel like empowered of like, oh, I wish I knew this sooner. Right. So that's why I did want to come on here because maybe there's somebody at home right now, like you could say in them. high school. Yeah, you could say them. And they're like, God, five, my parents sucks. Why? Right. If they're seeing this, maybe they can go, oh, it's not me. Mm-hmm. They're just messed up. Yeah, because that's important to know too, because that's going to have effects on you as well on your self-image, on your self-worth, all of those things. Because nobody wants to feel like they are the reason why someone is treating you that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, for years I thought I was the problem. And the way that someone treats you is a reflection of themselves and themselves only. Like it, does not, it usually doesn't have anything to do with you, yeah. even if it is a parent. Yeah. But no one deserves to be treated in that kind of way from a parent, from a, per- any, a random person, a friend, anything. So... Yeah, so when I cut her off, I I was just like, you know what? I'm worth more mm-hmm. than this abuse. Like, I am. Yeah. And I'm done. And you take that time to heal. Like, now is your time to have that. Like, you're older now. You're able to have that space and that distance. And I think that it's good for you. Yeah. And it's healthy. And you never know what the future holds and if she'll get help one day. And if she does, great. If she doesn't, fine. But at least now is your time to work on yourself and your mental health. And kind of healing and accepting, okay, this really wasn't me all those years. And like this is obviously my reality, but how can I turn my reality and my past into something positive? Yeah, I can move on. Exactly. And I can just focus on me. Yeah. And honestly, like the year, the past year of not having her in my life has just been relief. Mm -hmm. Of not having to see her name on my phone and think, oh God, what now? Mm -hmm. I mean, I do hear some stuff from my sister of like, um, like one time, you know, this past six months or so, she claimed she was pregnant and, oh, I'm pregnant and, oh, blah, blah, blah. Even the doctors don't know. And she told me that and I immediately knew, I was like, that's, that's a lie. Mm-hmm. So I said, no, that's a lie. That's not true. She's saying that so that she can then say, I lost the baby, feel bad for me. Right. Which is what happened, you know, but I knew, I'm like, she's running a script from 30 years ago and mm-hmm. thinking that that's going to work. Right. You know, um, and my sister did actually meet the boyfriend. I don't know if she's still with that guy. I don't know. But she did meet him and she said he seemed kind of normal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, even my dad had said, like, oh, I feel bad for that guy. Maybe I should warn him. But I said, no. I said, no, it's different now. It's not that you, she's really young and, you know, no. Yeah. This is a 50 year old woman who had a messy divorce has two children who don't really talk to her. If this guy can't see what's in front of him, that's on him Mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. It would be different. Yeah. Like when you and her met and you guys were early 20s, you didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. You should have been warned, but you weren't. But there's no re. It's different now. Yeah. It's different now. And if someone can't see that she's just running the same crazy stories, like that's on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I figured it out and I was a kid. Yeah. So... That's on them. Right. But yeah, I just, I did want to share this and like it was tough, but if, if one person can see this and think, oh, I kind of relate to that. Maybe, and they will. Yeah. you know, maybe my parent has a disorder. Maybe there's something wrong with their brain. Maybe it's not me. Then that can help. That can be helpful. Right. Absolutely. And I always say it might not always be the same exact story or the same exact right, experience, right. but Right, if it falls into a category of like some making someone feel like they aren't alone and they aren't the only one. Yeah, and and if my important. mom can see this and know like, hey, I'm not here to attack you. I'm here to help you. Mm-hmm. Like if you are seeing this and you can get something out of it, like just if my mom watches this, I hope that she watches the whole thing 
and keeps an open heart and an open mind and actually listens to what I have to say Mm -hmm. because I'm not here to be mean. No, definitely not. And I think too, it's hard to expect, you you never know how someone's going to take any, take something and it's hard to expect, you can't expect anything. Yeah. But I can't but let that stop no, me. No, not at all. And I think that you did an incredible job in sharing your story. And like I said, I think that it takes a very strong person that's willing to open up and be vulnerable to share what they've been through, no matter what that is. So you should really be proud of yourself and not only for doing it and coming on here, but for, like I said, helping others. And I don't even say potentially because I know you will. Because the reason I do this is because at least one person can always relate yeah. to what you know, the guests have to say. And that's the most important thing to me is to help, I feel like, give a platform for, you know, you guys to come on and just feel like it's a safe place to talk and share your story, but also to help the silent viewers that listen right. and, and listen to either learn or listen to feel like they can relate to somebody. So that's, you know, I think that's the most important thing. And that's what I would take out of it. And like yeah. you said, yeah, if she sees it, you could only hope that she sees it in a positive light. But if she doesn't, then she still... She still has a lot of work to do with herself. You know what I mean? And hopefully one day you guys can form a relationship. But if you don't, then it was all a learning experience. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So. I don't. I mean, at this point, I don't really care either way. Yeah. Like, right. I'm good mm-hmm. without it. If she yeah. wants to change and comes back and she's totally different, I'm willing to give her a mm-hmm. chance. But it's going to take but, time. But yeah, yeah. Like, it was a lot. Yeah. So I don't know. And I did have a friend. When I, I told him. The story of, you know, when she ran away and all that. Mm-hmm. And he really had nothing to say yeah. to me. Um, but he was like, well, I've always known you to be, like, really strong. Mm-hmm. So, you know, wow. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, seriously, you did an amazing job. Well, and thank, thank you. you so much for wanting to come on. I really appreciate it. And like I said, there's definitely going to be people that can relate. Yeah, and that I you're going to so. help a lot. So amazing job. <laughs>